I believe that people's lives are made up of stages. Within these stages, the person has different traits that make them who they are. This is why I think it is impossible to put a title on someone because more than likely, the way they will be described today won't be the same a year down the road. I think that this applies to all sorts of characteristics, especially one's outlook on life. An outlook on life is much more than someone's emotion at a moment, of course. Everyone gets sad from time to time, but those sporadic moments of being down doesn't necessarily constitute someone being labeled with having a bad view of life. The same goes for happiness. Even Tigger felt blue a time or two. For a label to be made, it has to be a commonly expressed attribute. Everyone thinks of their childhood as a carefree and happy times. I too can say this about my adolescent years. It was a stress-free time where I could be kept busy with a couple sticks or a sandbox. There was no judgment and I wouldn't have cared if there had been. Just put me outside and I'd be satisfied. I was just living life for myself and trying to find fun in any situation. No one is born with a negative view on life. Everyone's born a tigger. Then came middle school. This was the worst stage of my life for many people. And again, I'm right there with all of you. Everyone thinks of themselves as awkward in these strange years, but I brought that term to a new level. I never really fit in with anyone and had a hard time talking to people. A gentle giant my mom used to call me since I was so shy and soft-spoken. The giant part came from the lingering baby fat that refused to subside until after freshman year. I was self-conscious of all these things, which led to a low self-esteem. So I wasn't much of a ladies' man, often lingered on that, in fact, and moped around quite a bit, especially after instances of rejection. These were my Eeyore days. My parents' divorce also happened in these years. This signaled an extreme rough patch in my life. I tried to hold myself together because I figured crying and being sad all the time would just add to the bad situation that my family was facing. They had enough to deal with without having to worry about my state of mind. I let my emotions show only in poetry that I rarely let other people see. This was the only window into my true mental state. Even with this facade of indifference, I was so full of sadness and disappointment that I never really got my hopes up after it about anything. I tried not to get excited because that only led to disappointment. I never expected things to happen until they happened. I didn't get excited for trips to amusement parks or camping trips ahead of time, but rather waited until we were actually there to accept it as truth. Let's just say I was a very cynical preteen, and even... And this even led me to question God's plan. While I never questioned his existence, this doubt really made me worried about myself. I decided to rid myself of all this negativity going into high school. I saw high school as a fresh start where I could really make a name for myself. It was a rough transition that took some time, but the football team and some good friends, I was able to leave the old me in the past. I got in shape, built up some confidence, and tried to look more on the bright side. It was hard for me after training myself all those years not to trust good things, and every once in a while I would catch myself. Elf reverting back to my old ways, my poetry reflected these conflicting times. I looked more towards my faith and really came to Jesus in my high school years. I began to take disappointments as lessons and moved on from them rather than lingering on them and burying myself deeper. I began to fit in more and cared less of what people thought. I was finally happy with myself.